around 10% of the European population suffer from chronic inflammatory diseases, such as Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus erythematosus. But why is it often so difficult to quickly diagnose and treat these diseases? Let's take a look at an example. This is Emma. Emma has an unpleasant problem. For quite a while now, she has been suffering from episodic stomach pains, abdominal cramps and severe diarrhea. So, she decides to see her physician, Dr. Peterson. Dr. Peterson listens to Emma's symptoms and performs a first set of medical examinations, including blood, urine and stool tests. A few days later, the lab results provide them with a first overview of Emma's medical condition. Since the results show some inconsistencies and Emma's symptoms persist, Dr. Peterson sends her to a specialist for further examinations. For some patients, this is the beginning of a real odyssey. Especially for disorders as complex as chronic inflammatory bowel diseases, the right diagnosis is hard to make. Often, the affected patients have to see many different doctors, which can be very time-consuming. Valuable time, which Emma doesn't have, as her symptoms get constantly worse and start to strongly affect her quality of life. Therefore, the doctors and scientists of the international research project, SISKID, have set out to find new ways to better diagnose and treat chronic inflammatory diseases. Supporting them in this mission, the 15 project partners receive funding from the European Union. Large numbers of patients like Emma are enrolled into the project in several inflammation medicine centers across Europe. Since chronic inflammatory diseases often affect multiple organ systems simultaneously, doctors of different medical specialties are cooperating closely in these centers to understand the many facets of the individual clinical pictures and to provide the best care possible with today's medicine. These doctors, together with their patients, also formulate the unmet clinical needs addressed in the SISKID project. To date, it is not only hard to make a diagnosis, but it is currently impossible to predict the individual disease course. Moreover, despite a number of drugs already available, only some of the patients will respond to each one of them, and for most patients, there is no way to predict whether a given drug will work or not. SISKID thus aims to generate knowledge for new diagnostic tests, which help to select the most effective therapy at the right time. SISKID focuses on the dysregulated molecular programs of immune cells, which no longer combat external threats, but turn against the patient's own body. They also examine the behavior of bacteria in our gut, which normally peacefully coexist with the human organism. In inflammatory diseases, however, this natural balance is significantly disturbed. Similar to geographical maps, which depict different information layers like height or population density, the cells of a human organism can be locally analyzed on different levels. The analysis of DNA and RNA sequences enable the researchers to measure the bacterial composition in the gut and to decode the functional state of specific immune cells. This approach also allows to understand disease-associated DNA variants and help to explain programming errors in immune cell types. How does this help to improve diagnosis and treatment in the future? Let's work it out for Emma's case. The doctors take blood, intestinal tissue and stool samples. The composition of her microbiome is analyzed and dysregulated immune cell programs are decoded through RNA sequencing. Variants in her genome are checked for alterations which might be responsible for the disease or cause drug intolerance. Out of this large amount of data, the doctors and bioinformaticians then have to filter out the essential pieces of the puzzle, which may explain Emma's condition. In this process, the protection of personal data is of crucial importance. Within SISKID, thousands of patients are examined this way and studies are underway aiming to identify new markers for disease behavior and therapy choice from these data. In Emma's case, luckily, the answer is clear without these novel tools. A rare variant in her genome is the cause of the disease and allows a personalized treatment tailored to her disease type. The examination helped to alleviate Emma's symptoms quickly so she can go back to her everyday life. For many others, the right answers still have to be found. 
Not all of the methods Siskit uses may lead to new clinical routines, and genetic alterations like Emma's are only rarely identified as the cause of the disease. However, already in 5 to 10 years from now, deep insights into all levels of our molecular health map could become part of the standard diagnostic procedure. This could include decision support tools enabling a precise and personalized therapy for each patient. Ultimately, targeted reprogramming of dysregulated immune cells may be used to erase the disease program which drives chronic inflammation. Rather than suppressing symptoms, such therapies would, for the first time, target the cause of the diseases. The research done within CISCID will make an important contribution to achieving these overarching goals of medical treatment in the future.